Welcome to 21st Sports. Week 3 is underway and we are talking Thursday Night Football, the Houston Texans at the New England Patriots. And what a game this was. The Texans coming into this game undefeated. It's a short week for both teams. But the Patriots, not only were they without Tom Brady, they were also without Jimmy Garofalo as Jacoby Brissett was going to make his first start ever. As he's a rookie, he came in relief last week against the Dolphins when Garofalo left the game. And Brissett will be the first rookie quarterback to make a start for the Patriots since 1993, back when Bledsoe was a rookie. So what would happen here when Brissett was going to have to make this rookie start against J.J. Watt and the Houston Texans defense? And, of course, the coach for the Texans, he's familiar with the Patriots. He used to be a member of their staff a few years ago before making a detour at Penn State and ending up as the coach of the Houston Texans. But on a short week, the thing about it is, is both teams... They didn't get a lot of rest coming into the game, and it comes down to the coaches and putting their players in a position to win. It also comes down to that training staff and how well a team is able to bounce back off a short week, how well they have you know, their stamina built up through their training. So the Patriots training staff definitely helped them out in this game as they looked very strong, they looked very ready. And they had the second shutout of this short season. Only the second team to shut out another team in 2016. That's what they did here in this game. And the Patriots started the scoring in the first quarter. With about two minutes left, Steven Goskowski, a 24-yard field goal. But then on the kickoff that followed the field goal, there was a fumble. And that put the Patriots right in position to where on the very next play, Jacoby Brissett, a 27-yard touchdown run. Brissett making the moves, and he got into the end zone as he scores his first touchdown of his NFL career, the former Wolfpack from North Carolina State quarterback. So that was it for the first half, and both those scores came in the first quarter as the second quarter was scoreless. So it was 10 to nothing at halftime. Then in the third quarter, Steven Goskowski got his second field goal of the game, a 25-yarder that made it 13 to nothing. And then LeGarrette Blunt, a one-yard touchdown run that made it 20 to nothing. That would do it for the third. And then in the fourth, another fumble on special teams, and the Patriots would capitalize with a 41-yard run two plays later, and it was LeCarrette Blunt with his second touchdown of the game. What a run it was. Definitely go check that one out. I'd say go check it out on NFL.com. They've got the highlights there. But that made it 27 to nothing. Patriots shut out the Texans on the short week with their third-string quarterback. And the Patriots are 3-0. and They remain undefeated. And the Texans, you know, when you're looking at that four-game stretch without Brady, this was the game that was the most troublesome, especially coming off that short week. And the Texans are a team, you know, they've got one of the toughest defenses, and they're a team that's actually a favorite, you know, to make it to the playoffs this year. And it looks like they have a good chance to win their division. But on Thursday night football, it was all Patriots. And the Texans were playing sloppy. The two turnovers on special teams. The Patriots able to capitalize and turn those turnovers into points on the board. And not to mention just great play by the Patriots defense. Is they did not allow the Texans a trip to the red zone. So they were able to keep the Texans out of the red zone, out of the end zone, off the scoreboard. They didn't even get a field goal. And Jamie Collins playing up big time. Had that interception sheared also a couple of sacks. And Jacoby Brissett in his first start in the NFL, 11 for 19. Just 103 yards. But they didn't ask him to do too much. Just asked him to go out there, manage the game, don't make mistakes. And he didn't. He scored that touchdown on the ground. He had eight carries for 48 yards including that touchdown to go along with 103 yards to give him a total of 151 yards in the game. 
the LeGarrette Blunt carrying the load for the Patriots. He's a power back, and he was in his best form. He brought his game in prime time. 24 carries, 105 yards, two touchdowns for LeGarrette Blount. And Julian Edelman, four catches for 38 yards as the leading receiver for the Patriots. Before the Texans, Brock Osweiler, 24 for 41, 196 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. And Lamar Miller was the leading rusher for the Texans, 21 carries for 80 yards. And DeAndre Hopkins was the leading receiver in the game. He had four catches for 56 yards for the Texans. Griffin had eight catches for 52 yards. Then we look at the defense. As I said, Collins with the interception. Sheard had a couple of sacks. And McKinney had a sack for the Texans. But other than that, the Texans' defense was actually kind of quiet, especially J.J. Watt. The Patriots found the answer for Watt was actually been plaguing the league. But 19 first downs actually for the Texans, just 15 for the Patriots. On third down, the Texans actually 6 of 15, 40%. The Patriots were just 4 of 14 on third down, just 28%. But on fourth down, the Texans went for it three times, and they did not convert any of those. They were 0 for 3. The Patriots, they just punted on fourth down. But the net yards pretty close. The Texans with a slight edge, 284 to 282. But on the ground, the Patriots... 185 net rushing yards versus 109 for Houston. And then we look at the penalties in this game. The Patriots very disciplined, just three penalties for 15 yards. The Texans, not a lot of penalties, with six for 43 yards. And, of course, those fumbles, the two fumbles on special teams. The Patriots did have a fumble, but they were able to recover it. And in the red zone, the Patriots just won for three, just 33%. But the Texans were not able to make a trip to the red zone as the Patriots defense stepping up big time in this game. And for those of you who may have forgot or maybe you never knew, Belichick, he got his start as a defensive coach. He was a linebacker's coach. And, of course, he was the defensive coordinator of one of the better defenses to ever play, and that was the, the 86 Giants, of course, following the 85 Bears. They kind of overshadow them, but that 86 Giants that Belichick was the defensive coordinator for. They had LT, Harry Carson, Carl Banks, just to name a few. And he's always had good defense, even though the Patriots' defense isn't always ranked the highest with their numbers. But you always know that Belichick knows the defense inside and out. He knows the game inside and out, offense and defense and special teams. But the defense... You know, they have games like this, and you always, I always attribute it back towards the roots of Belichick, of him being just such an excellent defensive coach, which people tend to forget, especially with Tom Brady and the offense playing at the high level that they have played over Brady's career. Like I said, the Patriots always play good D. They always had a bend but don't break kind of defense, but here they just a very dominant performance shutting out the Texans. And even though the Texans, some of their numbers were better. And, of course, that came down, though, to the special teams as well. And that's another thing the Patriots have also always been known for is their special teams. It's little things like that can make a big difference in the game. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Which plays and performances stuck out to you? Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day. And are having a great week. And have a great weekend. And enjoy all the sports.